a lot of exciting chatter going on in the room. Uh, you're very welcome. And of course, I am not the woman of the house. Noelle Campbell Sharp is, and she's going to talk to you in a little while after we hear from the artist. So, a big thank you to Noelle for giving us origin this evening because without her, we definitely couldn't have put on this exhibition. I have a very, very easy job. First of all, to welcome the tourist. We're so delighted that she could make it here this evening. She does great work um, in terms of the traveling community and, and in part because we talked over the last few years about the work that she does, I was inspired to ask her to come this evening and I'm so delighted she could make it. And I'm equally delighted that the Minister for Arts, Heather Humphries, is here with us this evening. She is an enormous supporter of the arts and of the traveling community and works quite closely with a group of travellers in Cavan. So I was delighted they're all rushing here from the Dole, so I wanted to get the speeches done. A warm welcome to the other women that are working with me as part of this series, so particularly to Christine and to Anne Rose. Christine's still got her journey to complete, cracking the whip, Christine. And, and Anne Rose is the one that looks very relieved because she's had her uh, finale so far. So let me tell you a little bit about Leanne. You've had a chance to look at her work and she's going to talk to you in a little while about the work, particularly about reminiscence, which is the work that showcased in the room, her new body of work. So Leanne is a young traveller woman. Um, she's one of four that I'm working with as part of the documentary. She is incredibly special. So the reason she's special is for all sorts of reasons. We believe, Leanne and I, and nobody's going to disagree with us, that she's the only artist who's a traveller who's interpreting the community from within. That's our belief, because there are many people, including Lou Le Brocke, who've tried to depict the traveling community from outside, but she's the only one who's doing it from within. Secondly, she's unique because, unbelievably, of the 30,000 travelers that exist here in Ireland, only 1% go on to third level education, and Leanne is one of them. She's an incredible woman. I talk about her as being, I believe, the first traveler who will ever be in Dáil Éireann. She definitely will be. She's articulate, she's quietly confident, She's incredibly intelligent, and she has a way of talking that you're going to realize very quickly is very persuasive. When I met her first, she told me about her upbringing. Her mom and dad are here, John and Teresa. Incredibly wonderful family, and they have 10 children. I've had the pleasure of being in their house, baby in arms, listening to great music, playing with the horses. Um, but she grew up, um, born in Limerick, grew up in Dundarvan on a horse inside, and she lives in her Tlamoy now in Cork. She works in Central part-time, and my ambition for her and her ambition for herself is to be able to survive on her earnings from her art in the future. So I say that because when we started out on the journey of me teaching and mentoring women in business skills within the traveling community, there was a great deal of talk about whether you could possibly teach somebody business skills if they were an artist. By their very nature, is it not true that you shouldn't be doing what the customer wants, but what you want yourself? Was it just you know, unbelievable that we could talk about the crass idea of money? Well, my answer to that was there are plenty of people who make money out of artists, and it's not all from the artists. And perhaps if we taught more of them business skills, there wouldn't be such a small percentage of them who go on to earn a living out of being professional artists. So I hope that my journey with Leanne has taught her some of the dragon skills that I've learned myself, and that she's going to be no easy touch for anybody in the future. Leanne's work, um, is uh, in this room is her early work and her journey as she went through Crawford and in the other room is a new body of work. So I'm going to ask her to come and talk to you a little bit about that, about reminiscence and the exhibition itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really definitely wasn't expecting this many faces staring back at me or as many flashes from cameras. Um, I did try and prepare a speech, didn't have time to read it, but I might finish it completely. But um, I suppose Nora has covered quite a bit for me, so I don't need to go down that road. The biggest thing for me, I suppose, is to tell you about the body of work that's inside in the room. Um, I was going to entitle it Carmi, but I decided not to go down that road because I wanted to choose a title that tied all the work together. And basically for me, all the work is based on my memories of my childhood. Reason being, because the memories of my childhood are starting to fade and there's something that I don't want to lose. I'm almost certain the memories of my father's childhood are completely different to that of mine and I'm almost certain when my children are my age, they'll be completely different again. And I feel because it hasn't been documented in a way that I'm happy with that it's going to be lost forever. So what I'm trying to do is document it in a way that satisfies me satisfies some of you buyers. <laughs> um, so 
The work is based on a horse fair that I used to go to as a child. It's called Carmi. It's on a bus event every year on the 12th of July. And for the past five years, I didn't actually attend it because I was too busy with college and work and so on. Um, but I missed it quite a lot. And my memory of that was starting to fade. And I said, OK, I really need to go back there and document this because this is something. This is where I need a glass of water. How about wine? And I had one, but every time I started chatting to someone, somebody Perfect. wanted a picture, so I needed to leave them alone. <laughs> Thank you, Anne Rose. Um, so basically, if you've never been to Carmi or if you've never heard about it, um, what happens there is it's a horse fair, but it's not only a horse fair, it's an event where every traveller you know will be there from the south of the country. Um, I went there to meet friends and to have just basically a really good day. So what I tried to capture in the work was the atmosphere of that fair on that day. And I do believe that I did a pretty good job of it. Um, I did try and capture every little aspect of it in my mind and how I feel it is portrayed from within the community. And that said, if you go there, you will find that all the boys tend to hang out together <laughs> and all the girls will be stuck together as well. The girls do get quite dressed up. They get dressed up to impress. Um, Nora did take a look at one of the pictures. If you haven't looked at it in a while, it's entitled Yours, which is, we all probably know. Girls. <laughs> exactly. But she said, we were going through the work and we were looking at it, we were deciding what was going in this exhibition or not. And she said, put the one of the wedding over there. I said, no, Nora, that's Carmi. And she went, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So really, when you take a look at that body of work, I really do hope that it gives you the sense of this is Carmi and this is what it is about. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just on that body of work, I'll just say a little bit about how it came about. In here is the new work. When I started in Crawford, um, I absolutely had no appreciation of abstract art, but my tutor really wanted to do something about that. So they made me spend quite a bit of time experimenting with paint and texture and collage and so on. And this is the result of that. I absolutely fell in love with it and spent years doing it. Because my family aren't from an art background, they never got it. Nobody at home ever got it. They've come to exhibitions and said, yeah, what the hell is this about? But that never bothered me because I was happy doing it. And when I look at these pieces, I can spend ages looking at them and I know exactly what they're about for me. So for a long time, for me, they became almost my escape. This is where what was going on in my head came out on paper. It was almost like a diary. Um, so from there, I decided it's almost a bit too abstract. And because people aren't getting it, and my art, I felt, was so beautiful, I did actually want to share it with people. So I decided that I wanted to put something a little bit more suggestive into it and maybe start adding something a little bit more representational. And there's one piece in the room that is the turning point in that body of work. And it's right over there in the corner. It has a red dot beside it because a very clever guy came in last night and got in there before you all and bought it. Um, that is the turning point where I decided, yes, I definitely want something that suggests something else in the work. So from there, I decided I needed to start taking my own imagery instead of just using found imagery. So I began using the camera as a tool to create the images that I wanted. But once I started playing with the camera, I realized these images are amazing. I've never seen these before. I'm absolutely in love with them, and they do exactly what I want. They create a visual that just captures my memory exactly as it is. And because I love them so much, I decided to leave them as photographs, because photography, in my mind, is just as a valid art form as anything else. But that said, I do love that piece in the corner that has been sold. I can't believe I've actually sold it. I didn't really want to let it go, but it's gone. Um, the intention from here on in is to develop the work even further and possibly use these photographs or similar photographs like this and bring it that step further and bring it back into the print room and into the painting room. Um, so that's the work. Before I leave and before I shut up, I really didn't think I was going to be talking this long. I am sorry. Um, I just have to say thank you to a few people. So number one, Noel. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Noelle. Um, on the very first day I met Noelle, I absolutely fell in love with her. She's an amazing woman. There's two guys here from the Copper House, and I spent a 
week there doing work experience and I learned absolutely loads from them. I just want to say thank you for that. I really did learn a lot, so thanks so much. Um, I'll just keep going because I'll be here tonight, sorry. Um, everyone at Coco, especially Anna Marais, as I said in the catalogue, I didn't want to take part in the show, didn't want to take part because of other reasons whatsoever. Um, but they made me realise that this is going to be an absolutely fantastic opportunity. And I'm here, standing here today now, delighted that I took part. So, thank you so much. Also, um, I see a few heads. Hey, Andrew. From Fun Little Business to Art, um, this exhibition has cost quite a bit for me to put on. But thankfully, she's waived the commission. So it's all going in my pocket. <laughs> that's, that's if you buy, and I really do need you to buy because I need to break even at a grant. Okay? <laughs> no pressure. I told her those business skills. <laughs> I actually didn't know it was going to happen. You must have done something. Um, so I think I've thanked everyone. If I haven't, I'm sorry, but I do absolutely. I'm so grateful. I genuinely am. On that, I think I'm almost towards the end of my set. I suppose. Sorry. No. Oh, okay. But I suppose I can't forget Nora. Nora, I do feel this is my genuine opinion. Okay, it really does take a lot to create change, and there has been a lot of shows done in the past that I'm not happy with, and I'm sure all the travelers in the room will agree with me that they're not happy with them either. That is not how the entire community is. It may be a select few, but it is not everyone. You don't paint people with the same brush. And I think because Nora has chosen and initiate, initiated a show that is the complete opposite, is hopefully the first step to that big change. Please go. Okay, so thank you, Nora. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting to my family. I'm leaving the best to last. Okay. It's still family. <laughs> um, okay. Even though it took them five hours to get here and they tormented my brain. <laughs> and I was waiting in the hotel room up until about 20 minutes before I got here for my hairdresser to arrive. Um, I have already mentioned it in the catalogue. If it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have gotten through college and basically be standing here where I am today. And I suppose, without further ado, my lovely husband is going to kill me for doing it. <laughs> Um, he has put up with quite a bit in the last four months. I am not a nice person when I'm stressed. <laughs> so thank you, Thomas. Um, I think that's it. That's not it, sorry. I'm trying to think. I can't believe I'm talking this long. I'm so sorry. There is two dots in the room. I want at least 22. No, no, no. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. thank you. In <laughs> advance. <laughs> I told her I'd murder if she didn't mention the red dots. <laughs> um, as we have her here, the tourist would be really nice if she could say a few words, please. Um, I'm, I'm really privileged to be here this evening. Um, I think the work is uh, wonderful. Um, it's amazing, I think, the uh, vision uh, that uh, Leanne has created. And I think the kind of explosions of color as you come into the main room. And I had the uh, privilege of meeting Leanne and she was telling me the story behind uh, some, of the, uh, some of the work. And uh, I think it repays uh, a lot of the examination and looking because it is telling a story. Certainly till I came here tonight, I hadn't really ever heard of the particular horse fair. But uh, Leanne was saying to me that, uh, talking about the girls dressing up and that, that it's pretty much like Ladies' Day at the races. Uh, so you get the sense of it from the, um, the beautiful work of the uh, young woman uh, above the fireplace in, 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 in the other room, which I think is very, very expressive. I just want to congratulate uh, Leanne. Um, I'm delighted to be here uh, with uh, Nora Casey uh, and uh, to be here as well with Noelle. Um, they're both women who have made fantastic contributions, Noelle in particular, to uh, artists and the work of artists uh, in Ireland. And Nora, I think, is one of those forces of nature. I just want to say as well, in relation to uh, Leanne's family, uh, I think you have great reason to be proud of each other, uh, the support that you've obviously given her, uh, and the love. 
uh, but also I think <laughs> what she has uh, come to represent, obviously, as, um, if you like, a, a working artist. Uh, we haven't got that many women artists in Ireland compared to the number of men. And in fact, if you go back into Irish history, the number of women artists is fairly limited. So to have, um, who, you know, their work may have been lost, but if you go into the galleries around Ireland, men tend to predominate, particularly, you know, if you're looking at earlier decades or even earlier centuries. So to see this uh, new emerging artist here and the fact that she's a young, confident woman who really has something to say, uh, I think well done to you, Leanne, and well done to Nora uh, and to Noelle uh, and for the collaboration and the huge amount of work that I'm sure uh, today was about. I just got out of a cabinet meeting. Uh, so, you know, those are things to do when you're a politician. It was the first meeting after the summer. So I have to say it's very nice to meet everybody here and, uh, you know, on, on a lovely evening uh, with uh, September on our summer uh, still around. And uh, I'll say, I think we have everything sorted now, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and finally, um, actually, Leanne has thanked quite a lot of people, and it is true that uh, so many people have privately helped and publicly helped along the way. It's been fantastic. You know, it's not, um, it's no mean feat, but not an exhibition here. She's right when she says uh, there's 8,000 costs resting on this exhibition. So um, we really would like your support. And also, I do think that she's going to be phenomenally successful. So you get a chance to buy her um, at a great rate this evening because she'll be going up straight after this. But of course, it doesn't matter how much effort I put into it or Leanne put into it, uh, if we didn't have the support of Noelle Campbell Sharp, she's a fantastic patron to young artists and emerging artists, not just tonight, but most of you who know her know that she is throughout the years in all sorts of different ways, quietly as well as here at Origin Gallery. So she's been fantastic. She's been a great help in terms of her expertise. Uh, if you complain about the pricing, uh, you just have to look here to my right, because she helped us with that. She helped us with the framing. Danny and Barry uh, helped us to hang and to frame all the work in the room. Kate helped with the exhibition. So behind Noelle is a great team of people here as well. So I'd like to invite her to say a few words. Um, Noelle, you're the woman at the house here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I won't take you too long. <coughs> I just want to say that um, thank you, Nora, for first of all uh, choosing our gallery, um, because you could have gone lots of places, I'm sure. Um, for this amazing and exciting new series that you're planning. I mean, she's becoming a real TV star, this woman here. And, um, and also, thank you, by the way, for trusting me, Leanne, because you might have taken against me when we first saw each other. Um, but what most of you don't realize is actually about, maybe I was trying to work it out with John Cunningham there, or somebody uh, this evening, about, I think it was nearly 50 years ago, maybe 48 years ago, when I first came to Dublin, one of my first voluntary jobs, funny enough, was on a committee, committee called, euphemistically, the Itinerant Settlement Committee. But I left them because I actually felt that I'd prefer to be settled in the caravans, actually, and in, the, and in that atmosphere, um, having come from Wexford to Dublin. And, um, and so I was thrilled in a way, and I haven't told you that before, that I had this opportunity, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, help in a little way to spearhead your um, rise to fame. And you know, you were, first of all, I'd like to say, I wouldn't like to see you lost to the art world, um, I, with all due respect to <laughs> Tonish, uh, and to um, go into politics. We need like you, we need you in the art world, I can tell you. And, um, and looking so beautiful as well um, makes a big difference too. Um, but, um, but I also, um, I think actually that, you know, when you've made the remark there, um, uh, Nora, about so many people in a way making money out of artists, I want to tell you the ones that make the money. Galleries come and go. You see how many have closed down, okay? because they may talk about commission, which thank you for mentioning that we've waived in this particular case. Um, but you know, it's the collectors that win in the end, and the ones that have a good eye, and that can understand, in fact, when they see a young emerging artist like this, you know, 
uh, I have to tell you, by the way, I quite like her early work. I really love her early work. And sometimes an artist, as they, as they get on in, in their career, it's often the early work often that are you know, really valuable, really valuable. But I can see where she's going, and I think you must agree, it's probably the freshest thing. That collector who came in last night ahead of you all just happened to be outside, and one of the production team, I think, brought him in. And, um, and he's a guy who collects quite a lot, and he had heard about it, and he'd had a collection of paintings, by the way, by Louis Le Brocchi, Sean Keating, and just as you said, they were all representing the itinerant or the traveller, as they call it, community, in the way that they kind of saw them from outside. And there's no doubt you have cracked it, Leah, from the inside. And I think you're going to be very special, and I would recommend anybody, no matter what price is on the wall, buy, buy now, because she's going to be great. Thank you. Sorry, I just have um, one last job to do, and that's to present some flowers to Noel.